Hi, everybody. I'm Janet Reynolds, and I'm super excited to be here this week um, to talk with some of the Write On alumni uh, from the program and to talk about um, how Write On sort of influenced their lives, but also sort of how writing in general can um, be something that can assist us all in our lives, potentially. You know, people often think, well, I'm not a writer, so I can't write, right? I can't jump into writing. And I think that that is, um, you know, a mistake that we often make. And I think as with everything, um, you just have to dip your toe in the water and, you know, take little steps at a time and see how it feels. So um, I'm going to introduce each of the uh, panelists, <laughs> my official group here. Um, and uh, have them introduce, you know, tell you a little bit about themselves and what got them interested in write on in general. Okay, so we're going to start with Kim, who uh, took my class a year ago. Was it uh, spring of 2019? 2019. Okay, Kim, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you got interested in taking write on? Um, yeah, I'm. Kim, I took the write-on class um, last spring, uh, and I've always journaled. I always like to write, and my friend uh, emailed me. She found out um, about the mental health write-on Connecticut, and so she sent me an email saying, hey, you might want to do this, and I was like, yes. Um, so it was something I could do for myself, and I went, and I started writing, and it was really, really good for me to write with other people around. Had you done anything like that where you had been uh, in some sort of class, whether it's writing or otherwise, where you were doing kind of the sharing and sort of deep dive or deeper dive into things? Not mental health related. I took a public speaking class um, in college and it was my favorite class. Um, but that was basically like, here's a topic and create like a three to five minute speech about it. But this was more like create your own health topic and that was really more like personal and like powerful for me to do. Okay and finally just tell us a little bit about your mental health journey. Um it's a long road um so it hit me um basically as a teenager um I'm now in my mid-20s so it's been a long bumpy road and I've learned that it's not linear it's really like wavy and will bring you upside down and uh, back up again. But writing has really, really helped. Sort of like life. Because I'm thinking right now we've all been on a curve and maybe an upside down and circle and like, who knows, right? I mean, you know, um, which is also, you know, one of the lessons that are good to do. What are you, uh, what are you doing now? Uh, currently- um, I mean, besides, you know, being self-isolating, et cetera, right? Yeah, currently I'm doing nothing. Um, I try to journal um, at least once a week. Um, every time I think about Mental Health Connecticut and write on, I'm like, oh, I should write. And then I get inspired to like write like that day that I remember about it. Um, but other than that, um, I'm just kind of in a rut waiting to start a job. Um, what do you hope to do for your job? I mean, I have a job lined up. Um, I have an associate's degree in therapeutic recreation. Uh, so I'm waiting um, for the senior center to open so I can start. My cat just arrived. Oh, <laughs> um, we're getting Zoom bombed by your cat. Um, that's, that's awesome. Do you think um, you might incorporate anything from right on when you're working with these seniors? I don't know exactly what your job might be, but I'm just curious. Um, well, I will be the um, assistant program coordinator. Oh. So, um, we'll see like what programs are there and I'll probably suggest if they don't have already like a writing course or something fun to do. But a yeah. lot of places do have some type of. Right. Well, you know, seniors have a lot of stories to tell and sometimes, sometimes they don't know where to start just in getting them out. So you may have a lot of opportunity there just in that whole sharing idea. Anyway. Well, that's, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Lauren. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Tell us about yourself, how you got involved with Write On, and um, your mental health journey a little bit. 
Yeah. Um, so I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder uh, when I was 19 uh, and had a really difficult time accepting it. Uh, still have difficulty accepting it, um, but the Write On program definitely helped me with that acceptance. Um, my mom actually uh, found found it somehow. Uh, I think um, she found like an ad for it or something and sent it to me. And I was like, yeah, this sounds cool. Um, and went to the class. It like really held me accountable uh, to have other people there uh, as well. I always wanted to um, expand upon my writing skill and um, talk about mental health and my journey. Um, and the act of actually writing about my own process and my own journey um, really helped, like, uh, helped me accept it and helped me understand it better. And I think that is the case for a lot of people who take the class too. Uh, it also, you know, if you don't mind saying a little bit about your dad. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so my dad um, has bipolar disorder uh, as well. And um, when I was young, I always uh, blamed him for it and was really um, angry at him for his illness. Um, and then when I found out I had it, it, I was like angry at myself and, um, <laughs> there was a lot of anger going on. Uh, but it helped me understand, wait a minute, like this isn't just like his fault. It, this is something that, um, is really an illness. And it's, you know, my mom said something like, uh, it's, it's kind of like diabetes, like, you know, like it's, you take your insulin and you're not ashamed that you take your insulin. Right. Like, why are we ashamed that we take medication for an illness? Um, so it did really help um, overcome some stigma for me. Yeah. It is such, I mean, it's so ironic how that works, right? Because, you know, it, it, when you take using the diabetic analogy, right? You take your insulin there. He's like, awesome. You're doing all the right things. Right. And you take your, you know, Abilify or whatever, and you have to hide it mm -hmm. and not talk about the fact that you've actually taken a proactive step towards, you know, a positive life. You know, it's just, it's, it's strange. It needs to change. <laughs> it really does. It really does. And but tell you know, us what you're doing now. Oh yeah. Um, so since um, taking the class, actually, um, like before taking the class, I never really considered myself a writer. I had always like written on my own, but had never really publicly um, shared anything. Uh, and since taking the class, I have continued writing. I've continued doing poetry. Um, and now I present myself as a spoken word artist <laughs> um, and am releasing um, an album, my first ever spoken word poetry album. Um, and a lot of it has to do with my mental health journey. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. That's awesome. And don't you want, like, here's your chance, free publicity. Where can, <laughs> where can people get the spoken word album that's launching, like, now right yeah, it's coming yeah. out um, may 22nd um and you can follow me on instagram and that is at lauren b deer um and you can pre-order it on laurenbdeer.com okay shameless plug that's good that's good <laughs> um so freddie is our last but absolutely not least um took the class tell us a little bit about um how you got you know, got to the class and a little bit about your journey. All right. So um, at the time when I found out about Write On, I was at Capital Community College going towards my associate's degree. And my guidance counselor actually showed me a pamphlet or, or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, this might interest me because she knew I was into writing and she knew that that might be a positive outlet for me. So I went through with it. I took all the steps. I went online, applied and everything. And um, I had a great time. Um, I have a blog that I've had for over five years. 
Oh, wow. I used to write, yeah, I used to write on it like every day. And then suddenly like I had writer's block. I stopped writing. Like it did like once a month, not even. And then when I went to the class, I got more inspired and I realized there's different kinds like of writing, you know, poetry. And there's like the very abstract one or the one we did where the time kept going back and forth. Mm-hmm. It's different yep. methods. I don't know how to say it. But I got to really expand my mind on different styles of writing. Mm-hmm. And um, and now, like, I, I try to blog more. Yeah. Do you, do you want to share the, t- the name of your blog so in case people are interested in finding it? Oh, yeah. So it's an empathicpoet.wordpress.com. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. And, and what about your uh, mental health journey? What can you, what would you like to share about that? Well, for me, what works for me, like I used to be very negative. I was just like, I had no friends, no one. Like I was like, just wanted to die. Like I've, uh, especially in high school. And then um, basically I got to love myself and I got into spirituality and yoga and I realized, you know, we're all doing the best we can. Instead of saying I am broken, I say I'm doing the best I can. And um, that's what works for me. It's, it's hard to explain in detail. Everyone's different. Sure. Yeah, right. but that's, that's what happened. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's a wonderful message, right? Yeah. I mean, just and, and affirming. So yeah, and as I recall, didn't you do a split in your performance? I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could still do it, yeah. yeah. So, um, and this from somebody who once broke his back. So it was pretty impressive. Oh. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, it was a suicide attempt. I broke two bones in my lower vertebrae. And they, they had me on a brace for six months, but I didn't think I'd be able to do any of that. But, you know, I, I pushed myself and eventually did. Yeah, in some ways yeah. it's sort of a, it's a physical manifestation of what mm-hmm. you've also b- are doing, you know, spiritually, intellectually, et cetera. Through, through your writing and just, you know, general kind of um, focus on your, mm-hmm. your journey. I sort of feel like I should take mental health out of it because it's really just all part of the journey, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we're all on it and um, some days are better than others, right? Which it's is true. A, 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 something I hope more people start to regard it in that way. So, um, so one of the things we talked about was, um, I sort of, you know, sent you all a note and said, hey, do you have anything you want to share that you've written since the class? And so, um, you know, I said it needs to be short. It doesn't need to be, you know, this is not polished or, you know, anything. It's, it's just like, here's something I've written and here's something I'd like to share. So, um, Kim, do you want to kick that off? <laughs> um. I could. Um, it's very, um, like, I was, like, had to, like, dig through, because, like, I, I re- wrote something, like, a while ago, and I was, like, oh, I gotta dig it up, because I didn't finish it then, and it's still not finished now, but I like hey, it. Hey, hey, all, sh- all sharing is good, <laughs> right? Yeah. All, sh- all sharing is good, and also, um, anything you've taken to put down on pen and paper, or in my case, typing, it's all, it's all positive. I went through an experience this week. Uh, I'm taking a writing class. I feel like I haven't been doing it fabulously well. And then I was sitting there and I was like, wait a minute, I've written like four blog posts for clients. I've written, um, you know, a, a information for a webinar. I, and, and yet I don't categorize it as writing for me. But writing is writing, right? I mean, so I had this little epiphany that it all counts, yeah. you know? If you send a letter to somebody or postcard, I mean, it's all part of that process of, of ena- enabling yourself to sort of explore your feelings, get words on paper, not worry about sort of, is, am I officially writing? So, yeah. A lot of writing for me is just sometimes like a brain dump, like just anything like that's in my brain, just like put it out on paper. Yeah. Um, and does that, and does, and does that help you like organize your thoughts and things like that? It definitely helps get everything out. Um, like when I journal, like 
keeping a personal journal. I'm like, I have too much stuff going on. So let me just like, just like brain dump. Okay. Like one sentence of this, 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 and just kind of like list everything I'm struggling with. And if I go into detail about one thing, okay. Otherwise it's just get it out of my head so I can like get some rest and move on. Yes. I think that's a lovely way of putting it. Get some rest. Cause we could all get like stuck in, you know, the repetitive cycle of thoughts. They can be negative, they can be whatever. And, you know, um, putting them down and sort of saying, okay, that, that portfolio is holding that for me. Mm -hmm. And I may, I may come back to it or not. Yeah. Laura, yeah. it helps get out of your body. Um, so I'll, I'll write a lot about, um, you know, my mental health and, and what's happening inside my head. And, um, it helps to get it out of your head and just let it be there. Exactly what you're saying, like a container. Yeah. Well, you know how we would have the gourd or the, you know, the box hold our thoughts at the beginning of class, just one thought, put it in there. And then we burned it at the end. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's a ritual, but it's the same thing is true for putting your words down wherever in, and in whatever form you do. And, um, and sometimes that's the only act that you need to take, right. you know? So go ahead, Kim, let's read something, something shortish. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I live on the edge, but I am not hardcore. I'm an outsider, but not the cool, mysterious loner type. I stand on the edge of the circle because I don't belong inside. I exist on the outskirts in the forgotten abandoned spaces between cities. I don't fully belong anywhere. I'm not comfortable fully pledging allegiance to one particular group. I know I'm not alone, but we all try to hide inside the closest, most convenient troop, carrying scraps of flags of multiple tribes, but not committing to fly just one. Ask someone who they are, maybe, maybe they'll have an answer. As for me, I am many things. Everything and nothing at the same time, a literal walking contradiction while sitting along the wall, a rebel afraid of standing out, a team player who's a great leader, and an advocate afraid of speaking up. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From class. Um, anyway, that's, I love that. There's so many good pictures. I could picture a lot of that really nicely. Um, and I love kind of some of the stuff that you started to weave in around there, around flags and allegiance, um, tribe, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, there's good stuff to explore there. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely like thinking about like identity and like finding who you are. And like with my mental health, like I always wanted to be like one box and I always wanted to be one thing when I struggle with identity and I was like well I'm not just that one thing I'm this and this and this and this and this and I don't fit at one table I just go to all of them and so it feels like I fit at none yeah yeah that's very I mean that's that's great and I think if you you're going to hear me say now something I say regularly when I'm teaching but um if you take a couple of those images if you decide you want to do anything further with it um, you know, like write and maybe just write about the idea of a tribe for a while, right? Or, or maybe even, you know, look at tribes and see what, what does that mean? Sort of, you know, just as a thought process and you may get some ideas and also just the whole flag idea and, um, you know, we wrap ourselves in the flag as patriots or not, you know, I mean, it just, there's, there's stuff there. That's cool. Yeah. I thought about like the flags, like pirates, like pirate ships like to blend in, like you fly like the closest country flag. So you couldn't tell you were a pirate, but then you raise like your different pirate flag and stuff. So I love that. Yeah. See, yeah. Well, that, that, I, I look forward to maybe hearing more about that. Oh God, it's time. All right. So, um, Freddie, you go next. <laughs> I'm getting the flashing light anyway. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah. So actually I have a copy. What, these are one of the books I self-published. Oh, wow. Where the sun don't shine. Yeah. And then I call myself the one-eyed angel on my blog, so I thought I'd keep that. I still wear an eye patch. It's a trademark of mine. Uh, so I picked one passage from here. Okay. Uh, I wrote a letter to my past self. This was like a few years ago. Okay. It was shortly after right on. Okay, good. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't right. know how long it is, but just be aware, because I'm just looking oh, at yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Got it. Yeah. I love the setup. It sounds fascinating. 
Thank you. Seriously. Yeah. So, um, dear young me, don't love so easily and so intensely too soon. Embrace who you are and all the mistakes you have made as one as well as the ones you will make because those things aren't your downfall. They will build your resilience and make you a much stronger person. It's okay that you're hypersensitive because someday you'll realize that that is your superpower. You will have the power to sense how people are feeling, heal them, relate to them, and to be able to steer them away from negativity. It is okay that some people won't cooperate. They simply just aren't ready yet. Everyone is walking their own path. Don't force others to see things the way you do. Don't make people stay in your life if they don't want to. You may even have to let go of the ones closest to you in order to live a happy life. You are safe, you are loved, you are wise. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just, I love the idea of writing to yourself in different parts of your time period, because sometimes that enables yeah. That enables us to step back from it almost like it's like a character except of course it's not but it maybe feels a little safer or a little uh, a way yeah. to be more may, lets you be more vulnerable um exactly. in different it actually made me think about a writing idea uh you know uh, um you know to do in class but i i think that's i think that's Thank interesting you. um and um Thank you. and i like i like the advice you're giving yourself too in different ways mm. yeah yeah so. Can people get your book? I mean, are there places? Can you like if? Well, uh, it's on Amazon eBooks. They're each like three bucks. I published like three of them. Yeah. This was the third one, um, and I also published a novel. But all four of them flopped. Oh well, you know what? Yeah. All writing is 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 towards other writing you know I mean <laughs> I've written eighty thousand words of a memoir and I have to rewrite the whole thing. So oh, do, I, do I think, well, do I <laughs> yeah. think the 80,000 words are a flop? No, they just, that's what I needed to do. It's like, you know how sometimes I'll say, oh, you're clearing your throat to get to where you need to be. And, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like that was a massive throat clearing. <laughs> now, oh, thanks. I like that analogy. Right. Now I need to take, you know, now I need, now I can start talking, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. So maybe on your blog, does it say where you could get them on Amazon? If it's, if not, you can oh, maybe. Oh yeah, in my blog, uh, it's on the upper left hand corner. There's a drop down menu. Okay. And then I have all the hyperlinks for my four books and then, and then all my social media and everything. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, what would oh. you like to share and what, you know, give us the context. Um, I'm going to share a poem that I wrote a couple of days ago. It's not off of uh, the album that is going to be released on the 22nd, um, but I thought I would share it because I'm pretty proud of it. Good. Welcome aboard Flight Bipolar One. Thank you for choosing Lauren's brain. Our captain hasn't been taking her medication for a few months now, so you can expect some slight turbulence on today's flight, but don't worry, she feels great. Now, as solid ground gets farther and farther away, notice the impulsivity in her behavior, irritability, and anxiety. As our flight increases in altitude, she's sleeping and eating less and less, only needing four hours of rest instead of the full eight, nibbling on meals instead of the full three or forgetting them all together. Bing. You are now entering hypomania. It looks like we've entered the hypomanic portion of our flight. For the remainder of our journey, insight, restraint, and self-awareness are no longer available. However, the creeping feeling that everyone is out to get you will be handed out freely per your request. Please note that any purchases made on board today are non-refundable, as our captain has already spent all of your money on an eight-foot cowhide. She swears she will use it to make Mardi Gras masks that she can sell in New Orleans, which, by the way, is 1,422 miles away from her current location, so she can become rich and famous. Bing. You are now.
are now entering mania. If you turn your attention to just outside our aircraft, you'll catch a glimpse of the friends who don't understand abruptly exiting her life. You may have noticed we've picked up speed now. Our captain hasn't slept in three days and all the thoughts here on board Lauren's brain are moving so rapidly that her mouth can't keep up with them and she can't finish verbalizing a single. Now would be a great time to introduce our captain to you. When she isn't out saving the world, controlling the weather, or traveling to alternate planes of existence, you can find her in her living room, nonsensically rearranging all the furniture. Err, err, warning, warning, psychosis approaching. And that's all I have so far. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's so good. I mean, um, just, you know, you can, it's a great, it's a great metaphor to have taken. The flight, you know, and there's so many things around a flight. Um, and of course, then using the, the the flight attendant is great <laughs> is great and um i assume at some point there may be a crash but whatever um but <laughs> might be uh right there janet <laughs> right. yeah um so thank you for sharing that i believe we have a question because we're getting near the end i mean basically before i go to the question i just want to say you all who are watching you have basically watched sort of a right on mini class right <laughs> because we've talked, we've talked about things that we're thinking about, we've talked a little bit, we would talk more about sort of the writing itself perhaps in other ways, but um, people share, they get some, some initial reaction and then, you know, maybe get some ideas rolling around for some other thoughts and so that's it. So we, our question is, what about Facebook? Does that classify it as a write-on despite the fact that it is on a computer? not sure i fully understand the question um i mean I, I if i understand it correctly i think um any writing counts you know because um uh you know i'll make lists sometimes of just initial ideas around things or whatever so i think it's it's all about sort of getting the process going just getting yourself comfortable and if if um you know i'm going to give an example um Matthew Dix, storyteller, uh, author of like, I don't know, a million books. He, he writes so much, it just blows my mind. And he is our, I'm gonna be interviewing him next week for our um, Write on Wednesday. So come join us. Um, but he's just done a novel that is basically a book of lists. And you know, now there's more to it than that, but that's sort of the basic kind of premise around it. So, you know, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for doing different kinds of writing. And um, if you do your writing in a long Facebook post, if I understood that correct, the question correctly, sure, that counts, right? I mean, I think we get stuck on the idea that it, I'm, again, it, we, we have such preconceptions about what officially makes a writer. And that gets in the way of so many people, right? You know, saying I can write. You know, um, and um, nobody, I've done this, said this before, but nobody says that about running, right? You, if you can move your legs, you can run. You know, now maybe you're not a speed runner or maybe you can't run long distances or whatever, but you are actually doing it, right? Um, and it counts <laughs> as, as, as running. Um, and you can, you can improve and, if you are interested, you can make yourself a better runner if that's something that matters to you. And there are steps you can take. And that's sort of what's true of writing as well. It's, it's all about the practice. Um, so anyway, um, I think we're getting ready to wrap up and I just wanna thank everybody for coming. I wanna thank you guys. It's so good to hang out with you here virtually as always. Um, and if uh, we have, you can follow right on, we're on Instagram. We are also on um, Facebook and, you know, I put up prompts and we share things there, ideas around writing, et cetera. So if that's something that's of interest to you, we would love to see you there. And of course, we'll be teaching classes. Uh, if you want to um, hear everybody's performance from their class, you can go to write, uh, Mental Health Connecticut, uh, the Write On page, and the Telling Tales page, which is what we call each person's uh, piece that they read um, at the final class. And you can hear 
uh, Lauren and Kim and Freddie's pieces from when they took the class. And you can hear all the other alumni as well. So, and you can sign up for an email if you want to take the class when we offer it again in real life soon. <laughs> so uh, I think that's it. Jackie, you're going to take us out. I hope. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye, guys. Talk to you soon. All right. See ya.